this is going to be a long one because it's about batteries and um, I have watched plenty of other vloggers talk about battery power and I've not really quite understood it and, and it's only through my own research of batteries and, and the type of batteries that there are and um, you know I've taken a, a greater interest in it now um, that I've kind of finally understood it so all I want to do realistically is share a little bit of my homework as to what type of batteries um, there are on the market how much they cost um, through life costs and all that other type of homework which um, which I do um, but it's a simple man's thought process it's, it's nothing too too in depth um, about the internal gubbins of a battery because you know, I, well, I, I kind of don't know it and, and do I need to know it? No. All I want to know is how to use the batteries to maintain the best effect, to maintain through life costs so that the batteries can, can deliver the power I want them to deliver when I'm on the boat with the tech I've got on the boat. Battery tech has improved over the past, I don't know, two or three decades and it's because of that uh, increased power in batteries, whether it be flooded lead acid battery or whether they go to lithium, all those batteries have improved and um, make life in more enjoyable on an arrow boat than they were perhaps um, three decades ago. Mark, up from the fit out pontoon, clearly is, is doing my fit out and he, he does all this for me. I think it's important for me to understand battery power so I can engage properly and ask various questions um, of Mark so that um, you know basically I'm getting what I want. Okay so let's let's start off with a mythical boat. It doesn't matter what size, doesn't matter what text on the inside but we're, for argument's sake we're going to suggest that this boat uses a hundred amp hours of power per 24 hour period. And we're going to start with a lead acid battery because that's kind of like the basic battery that, that people have. And we're going to suggest, for argument's sake, that this battery is a 100 amp hour battery. Basically because it keeps the sums easy for me to understand and for me to explain. So in a 24 hour period, the, the starting day, this is military timings, the start of the day starts at 0001 and ends at 2359. If we start off at midnight with a fully charged battery of 100 amp hours and we use 100 amp hours of power per day, that means that battery should last us a full day. However, with lead acid batteries, you can only use 50% of that. So that does mean that 50% of that has been used by 12 o'clock midday. That means you have to run the engine and charge the battery up and then of course you use the other 50 amp hours in the last 12 hours and then you have to charge a battery up again now if lead acid batteries have a a cycle of let's say 300 um, cycles in its lifetime it won't take long when you're charging the battery twice every 24 hours for that battery to deplete so if you can only use 50% of a 100 amp hour battery, the simple solution is to add another one. Which means that in that 24 hour period of two times 100 amp hour batteries equaling 200 amp hours, you can only use 50%, makes 100 amp hours, your boat uses 100 amp hours per day, life's good. And if you take a little bit more power out the battery than you anticipated on a said time, um, not you know we haven't got solar at this point um, we haven't got a generator but you've taken a little bit more power out of the battery then you're going to use a little bit more than the 50% add a third battery um, which gives you um, 300 amp hours it gives you 150 usable amp hours uh, and then that covers you for that little bit of extra use you wanted to charge a battery or you wanted to charge a phone or whatever it is you you overstepped your 100 amp hours in that in that basic day um, then you've got a little bit of flex you've got a fridge you might watch television for a couple of hours on a day you know you might charge your phone and there's electric lighting and, and basically that's 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 simple boating use of electricity those basic thought processes is the reason why a lot of narrow boats have 
um, one starter battery and three leisure batteries generally of 100 amp hours or 110 amp hours giving you that little bit of flexibility but it does mean you have to charge the batteries up every day now in reality um, lead acid batteries generally take some time to charge so although you can smash you can, let's say for example you've used 50 amp hours and you need to charge a battery up to get it to a full charge um, takes 14 to 16 hours it will charge up to 80 percent we've got Pareto's law again haven't we you charge up to 80 percent quite quickly and then it takes 80 percent more time to get the extra 20 percent in the battery and clearly in the summer months you know you, you it, it will take less because you've got if you have solar solar's trickle charging various bits and bobs up but how you use the boat is also important because if you're a continuous cruiser you're you're charging the battery every time you move so you know providing you move every day lead acid batteries are still very good and and do what they should be doing in my research i found out that 30 percent is a good number if you don't want to um, deplete your battery or you want to make your batteries last longer and not get to 50. So prices at a battery store that I was looking at online, um, 110 amp hour, 12 volt wet cell battery um, goes for about 81 pounds. And um, some deep cycle batteries were as much as um, uh, virtually 200 pounds. Other information on lead acid batteries, um, I'm reading this now. A full discharge causes strain on each discharge and charge cycle, permanently robbing um, the battery of a small amount of power each time you do that. The loss of a small amount of power in a good battery doesn't really affect its, its performance. If you've got a hungry computer, lead acid batteries don't like an enormous amount of power drawn from that a constant discharge enables those lead acid batteries to last um, a considerable time. If you draw power quickly from them, they don't like that because they start to overheat. Other styles of lead acid batteries are as the AGM, which is the absorbed glass mat. I'm reading this again. AGM has a very low internal resistance and is capable of delivering high currents on demand and offers a relatively long service life, even when deep cycled. AGM is maintenance free, provides good electrical um, reliability, and is lighter than the flood lead acid type due to the reduced amount of lead being used in the battery. Offers a depth of discharge of 80%, although some suggest that AGM should only be used up to 50% depth of discharge. And it's five times faster at charging and has a better life cycle. It stands up well into cold temperatures, although how many temperatures, you know, often in the UK, it's just generally a wet type of time. Um, so we don't really have properly cold weather. We have cold snaps and warm spells, as the way I put it in this country. One of the benefits of an AGM battery, it's very much like in, in its build process, in the way it, it works, is very similar to a lead a deep cycled lead acid battery or flooded lead acid battery therefore they're quite interchangeable with with that system costs um, of 120 amp hour AGM battery I found one online for 223 pounds so they are more expensive than the cheapest of the lead acid battery um, I found also 132 amp hour AGM battery uh, but this is in a bank of four comes in at 1150 pounds so there are there are advantages you know you do need to shop around for for whatever price you, you can afford um, again, um, gel batteries we're moving on to gel batteries are a form of lead acid um, but they come in the case of something called um, let's have a quick look a valve regulated um, lead acid generally lasts longer than an AGM battery Moreover, the gel battery can be charged quicker uh, than any wet cell battery. Gel is known for its good performance at high ambient temperatures. In comparison to AGM, it's superior at low temperatures and has a better current delivery because of its internal manufactured stuff and resistance. The cycle count of gel is said to be larger than the AGM 
So again, cost of gel, slightly more expensive than AGM, but not, not more so. You know, again, it's the battery management system you're going to need to put in there. Um, but 120 amp hour um, battery cost 227 pound. Carbon lead acid batteries, well, they're pretty good to be fair. Um, totally sealed for life, partial state of discharge or depth of discharge, um, it, it, up to 90%. So they're pretty similar to lithium batteries. They're super fast at charging, uh, less than one hour um, from a 90% depth of discharge. Uh, and they can handle 2000 cycles from depth of discharge. Uh, some offer a five year guarantee. Some manufacturers claim that if you discharge a carbon lead acid battery um, fully, so you've got absolutely nothing left, they can withstand 500 cycles of 100% depth of discharge, which again is quite impressive. They can handle 2000, 2000 cycles of, of charging, which again, um, for 300 odd pounds for a, um, let's have a quick look, 300 pounds for a hundred and, 106 amp power battery. Carbon batteries seem to be the way forward. Lithium batteries. They're lighter, smaller, quicker to charge. They have a greater capacity um, for discharge. You can use up to 80 or 90% and it kind of just laughs at you because it can take that amount of discharge. Um, and they're just generally a more cost-effective battery. But they do sting the pocket a bit at, at the initial outlay stage. The charge is quicker because they have less resistance in charge. The, the battery will produce the same amount of output from 100% to 90%, which to me is tip-top. Um, not forgetting that lead-acid batteries, you can only use 30 to 50% and of course, if, if you're going to draw a lot of power from that lead acid battery, then it's going to fluctuate in the amount of power it will give you. The cost, the cheapest one is um, 100 amp hours. Let's have a quick look. 524 pounds and 99 pennies. Well, that's with a 30% New Year's discount. Um, let's look at some of the leading brands on the canal circuit at the moment. There's a 100 amp hour battery for 1,100 pound, a 160 amp hour battery for nearly 1,600 pounds. As a rule of thumb for um, lithium batteries, one amp hour equals 10 pounds. So, you know, but you can buy cheaper. Now, there's a disadvantage to buying cheaper. This is a, a non-branded battery for my camera and I charged it up and it's kind of doesn't fit the camera anymore. I think it's it's slightly warped. Um, and branded batteries, they're still going. I've had these cameras for four, three gusting four years. So um, you get what you pay for and do you buy a branded battery or do you buy a cheaper battery? Uh, do you know what? It's difficult and I wouldn't like to advise either way to be fair. Lithium is the new thing in cars. Um, it's facilitating the decarbonisation of the transport segment. Um, but is lithium as green as it's made out to be? It's mined um, in salt flat areas of the, of the, of the globe. So Australia has a, a massive lithium mining business as does Chile and areas of South America. But in some of these areas, um, there's a lack of water and you need half a million gallons of water in order to mine a tonne of lithium. If a small population was living in and around that mining area and you're short of water supply anyway because you're in the wrong geographic area for water to fall constantly, um, then there's some areas that have uh, have gone into drought. So, do you know what? It's really difficult, isn't it? You know, globally, globalization of lithium and all that sort of stuff, it's really quite difficult. One source I read about in doing this vlog states there's between 30 and 90 
million tons of lithium left on the planet. An academic stated that lithium is going to run out by 2025. Mm, discuss. Another one 2040. Probably more realistic. But that does depend on how much lithium is dragged out of the earth because most cars these days are going electric which require lithium batteries. So, so there's lots of cuffing and bluffing and, and sort of best guess estimates as to how long lithium is going to last. Bloomberg annual battery survey pointed out that prices have fallen in year 20 to 21. However, in the last quarter of 21, prices have started to rise on lithium. A recent report written by another, another academic stated that lithium prices on the commodity market have been slowly rising in recent months. A lithium producer in China has written to its customers stating that um, prices are on the rise and to mitigate that as you see fit. It's going to be a tough time with the car manufacturing market. As lithium prices rise, are they going to reduce their profit margins or are they going to pass those prices on to the customer, which then makes electric vehicles less attractive? I think what's clear to me at this moment in time is that I've bought an Arrow boat at the wrong time. Still prices have gone up and that's had an effect on the cost of my boat. And I don't know of any other builders, but I'm, I'm pretty sure all boat prices are, are, have gone up or will go up in the very near future. Now this is down to a disruption in the supply chain. And that's something that I think, you know, I could, I could talk about for a, for a particularly long time and, and not this vlog. but. I am mindful that the boat prices are going up and it is affecting my pocket. What isn't an option, unfortunately, because I am, I've not become an eco warrior, but I wanted to go as green as possible. But to go green on an Arab boat just exceeds my pocket, unfortunately. So is, is, so is lithium the right thing to do? Well, um, all the information I've gathered on lithium batteries is, is due to um, electrical vehicles, uh, but at some stage or other that's going to have a knock-on effect on normal lithium batteries um, for the marine market. Doing some of this research I found that there's one writer that says that have a significant use of one of those batteries, defined significant, then that can reduce the total power that that battery can hold from 70 to 90 percent of its initial 100 percent. But then what's extensive use? Now I claim, I think, you know, if you're using a battery, any battery, and I think we can do this on our mobile phones or, or otherwise, if you smash out that battery and use 100% of it all the time, every time, and then charge it up from, from zero to hero, um, then that's going to damage the battery. So I think that's significant use. So that you don't drain that power to 90% all the time or 100% all the time, or then maybe you need to get more electricity, more batteries, than you currently need. So is it wise to invest in another battery that allows you greater flexibility on the amount of power you use? Bottom line up front. I think, this is Chris's personal view, I think if you want to live in a marina or you want to live on the side of um, the canal, on the towpath, then probably lithium might be the best battery for you, particularly if you don't want to use the hookup services on the marina. If you are going to continually cruise and use the boat every day or every other day, then there's no reason why any of the lead acid batteries um, isn't sufficient for your need. So it does depend on your requirements for your life, how you want to live, if you are going to move every day, if you are going to live on a marina, if you are going to live on the side of the towpath, all of those create a variable which needs your own homework to decide what power is right for you. Through the research, the best batteries I can have are lithium. Through life costs, it's cheaper. They're better at holding charge. They're better at charging themselves up, charging themselves up. They're better at, at being charged to, to 100% and um, they maintain their current flow of electricity, the, the power that you have 
on the boat they maintain that throughout the, their life and, and provide and I think you look after them and they need to be kept warm so they need to be stored inside the boat. Lithium is probably the best choice but it's down to your pocket. My decision. Because I'm going to continuously cruise one of the batteries I considered was the um, was a deep cycle lead acid battery it costs about 160 pound for 220 amp hours of battery of, of amp hours in the battery being that I can only use 50% of that that gives me 110 amp hours per battery and I was going to have um, you know I plan to have six of them that gives me 600 amp hours of battery life and if I'm continuously cruising and I'm gonna have solar on the roof, I believe that battery, that style of battery is going to suit me well. What I haven't mentioned or what I did mention some time ago in one of the earlier vlogs is I've been able to save a little bit more money due to lockdown and also um, my ex-wife and I have, have, have a, come to an agreement on financial stuff on divorce. So I've got a little bit of extra money and instead of wasting that money, I'm going to plow that into, into my home. And lithium is what I'm going to buy. Now I don't know what style of lithium. I've asked Mark or I've said to Mark, you know, give me a couple of options that I can choose. There are various different brands that, that we're looking at and I'll get back to you in due course. But the reason for that is, you know, for me personally, I don't think I've got a, a difficult lifestyle. I don't think I'll be having the lights on unnecessarily. The television would very rarely be on. I prefer to read. But when the kids come, it would be, oh, Dad, can I charge this? Dad, can I charge that? Dad, this, Dad, that, Dad, the other. And, and all that sort of, you know, they're going to have laptops, mobile phones, perhaps, in, well, certainly in due course, PlayStation, all that, all that gaming culture that today's kids do. I've got to sort myself out for that and that's one of those things that I've got to suck up. But one of the things I'm mindful on is that through life, through life costs of lithium, at some stage or other, I'm going to need to replenish them. So whatever I spend on batteries now, perhaps in 10 years time, I'm going to need to replace them with a like sourced battery. Knowing what's happening to lithium in the commodities market, that's a risk. I hope that's helped because buying batteries was probably the thing that gave me the worry beads. I know what I wanted, but could I afford it? And now fortunately I can. Am I making the right choice? It's walking in my footprints to understand how I'm going to live on my own. That's one thing. And how I'm going to live with um, three children that demand electricity. I think lithium is the right choice. Discuss. I shall also keep you informed as to what's set up when we've decided that. I trust Mark implicitly in his decision making. He knows my intent, he knows what I've got to do. You know, I, I've said, I've discussed with him, I need various options. But the one principal reason that I went with Mark is, is that he lives on a boat and has done for some considerable time. And in the military, he's what we call SQEP. SQEP, suitably qualified and experienced person. You know, to have the knowledge is one thing, but to live the knowledge, well, that's another. I know it's been a bit dry, but I hope it's been useful or informative. Hopefully I'm looking forward to visiting the boat in the very near future and sharing that stuff with you and, and what goes on. Yeah, we're going to be fitting electric, electrical cables very shortly and wiring and things, and which I don't know anything about. So again, huge learning curve. See you later.